Greetings, friends, and welcome to another episode of The Mistake Zone, your weekly dose of our lives and the mistakes within them. My name is Jaron Wade. Joining me, as always, one of my best friends in the whole wide world, Matt Alba. Hey, Matt. Yo. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Matt, uh-huh. I, I I hear something in your voice, but... Uh-huh. It's always great to hear you're doing good, you are doing good. But Mm -hmm. Matt, Mm -hmm. I come to you this week feeling, you know, a bit less than my normal energy. Because Uh Matt, Uh experienced some, let's say, mistakes this week, and I want Uh to share them with you, you know, right off the bat, as we always do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Matt. Jaren, what what bad thing did you do to your body this time? Well, if we're doing bad thing that I did to my body, let's start off with our weekly consumerism check. Okay, okay. And that if there's one thing I like to do is go to Costco. Matt, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. send it on this audio journal of ours that I spent my birthday at a Costco. Oh, yeah. Uh, right, yeah because that's yes. my life right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. And this week, we found ourselves again at a Costco. And we thought, okay... Let's get ourselves a little treat. And Matt, Mm -hmm. I love me some Costco because after we spent, Matt, it's the meme. We spent a bunch of money on things we probably didn't need but looked Mm -hmm. cool. And Mm -hmm. we rounded off with a trip to their hot foods counter. Uh Uh-huh. Because we typically don't buy the rotisserie chicken, uh, but we buy the other lost leader, which is a sausage or hot dog. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But this time around, Matt, we per- also purchased a Sunday, which, of course, over the past couple of years has gone up in price. Mm-hmm. Now, we purchased a caramel Sunday, which I believe is, Matt, it's coming close to $4 a Sunday uh, at Costco now. But mm-hmm. from our previous experience with these Sundays, there are usually some beefy boys, Matt. They're uh-huh. beefy boys, and if you get the hot caramel Sunday, that caramel is hot. Mm-hmm. So we get a hot caramel Sunday, dig our spoons in, and realized, Matt, uh huh. We thought, oh no, they made our Sunday wrong because usually when the Costco uh, employee makes you a Sunday, they usually fill that bad boy up. Uh huh. But. Uh-huh. We realized that the cup was done in a way where the ice cream swirl only did the perimeter of the cup, and the middle of the cup was hollow, if that makes sense. Matt. Oh, yes, I know what you mean. Oh, where <laughs> we debated and thought, oh, do we, should we complain about this? Because Matt, mm-hmm. you know me, not one to complain. Mm-hmm. Try not to. Mm-hmm. Try not to. We we know how hard it is in a retail environment. Mm-hmm. But when that hot fudge of hot caramel sundae is approaching four dollars, my partner bit the bullet and said, "You know what? Close to four dollars. I'm going to ask what's the deal with the sundae." Mm-hmm. So my partner goes up to the employee and asks, "Hey, is the sundae supposed to be like that?" And that mm-hmm. the clerk ga- looked and gave that. So Matt, we we both worked retail, <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. and you know when a customer kind of calls you out, and then you give that smirk of "Oh no, <laughs> we've been found out." Uh-huh. Matt, uh-huh. the employee gave that smirk and said, "Yeah, that's how we make our Sundays now." Oh man, <laughs> Matt, <laughs> Jaren, I don't think the Sunday at Costco is worth it anymore. Oh man, Jaren, does this mean that uh, it's it's back to what was it, early two thousands? Maybe like, you know, early 2010s when uh, Froyo was the craze and you're paying by weight. It might be the case now, Matt. Might be the case. Oh, man. Plus, mm-hmm. I hate to say it, Matt. Mm-hmm. I, I think the sausages and hot dogs are getting smaller, too. Oh, Jared, maybe you're just, you know, becoming more of an adult and you're getting, you know, proportionally bigger. Of course, my, my tummy probably can't handle it right now. And Matt, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know us uh, with our Filipino dreams, we probably shouldn't have that much dairy anyway. But <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> feel cheated, Matt. I feel cheated. I understand the the hot dogs, the sausages, as the I don't even know if the kids call them glizzies anymore. But <laughs> Costco lost leaders, but notably smaller than what I remember. Oh, man. And that feels bad. Damn. But 
But you know what also feels bad? What, Jaren? Uh, was on eBay again this weekend. You uh-huh. know, continuing our discussion on consumerism. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I saw a particular PSA 10 card uh, up for auction. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Matt, it is another Y. Schwarz uh, uh, Ichka okay. from QQ. Uh, oh. Gold foil signature. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Matt, mm-hmm. it was her swimsuit card. Uh-huh. And I thought, oh, I'm, fr- I'm going to try to snake this by the end of the the auction which mm-hmm. was you know uh last night at 12 <laughs> 30 a.m uh-huh. and that mm-hmm. feel bad moment number one okay uh five minutes to go i was checking the bid ichka's top bid was 80 usd okay uh, th- this vendor had three two other qq cards you know of mm-hmm. the swimsuit gold foil variety mm-hmm. uh itsuki her uh, bid at the time was 100 USD. Mm-hmm. And um, Matt, mm-hmm. our girl Nino was uh, 130 USD with 10 minutes to go. Mm-hmm. 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 So already, Matt, uh-huh. one, one, how is Ichka having a lower or higher bid than... Uh, so, wow, well, that was <laughs> that didn't make sense. How come Itsuki had a higher big than Itsuka? Made me feel bad, man. <laughs> Jaren, but... Jaren, at least it wasn't Yotsuba. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. So, Matt, I, you know, I tried to wait. Uh, 15 seconds left in the auction rolls around. I put in my max bid of 85 USD. Mm-hmm. And I watched that timer tick down and thought, okay, I'm going to... Uh, when this auction, I'm going to be feel real good about myself. Mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. Two seconds before the auction ends, new hires bid, 86 USD, and Ooh. auction closes. Matt, Damn. I am not good at trying to snipe bids. Mm-hmm. Where Jared, they, they knew someone was going to try to snipe at 85. I should have went with 86, Matt. I should have went with 86. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I don't know how much you try to play eBay, Matt, but... For some reason, I'm always paranoid that <laughs> when you bid on eBay, you click place bid, you put in your bid, you click bid, and then there's a confirmation screen where <laughs> I always end up hot bidding at the 30, 20, 15 second point. Mm-hmm. And that, that's still leaving too much time on the table. Oh, yeah, I'm not good time, at that. That's a lot of time. <laughs> that should be, that's pretty much hours at that point mm-hmm. that... I, I'm still trying to figure out the science of when I need to, you know, hit confirm on my bid. Is it 10 seconds left? Uh, because if I'm too late, Matt, my bid just doesn't go through. And that also feels bad. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. Um, I come to you this week with uh, <laughs> my tummy less full because I didn't get eat, get as much ice cream. And I lack a swimsuit, a signed swimsuit uh, <laughs> itch card. Damn. And that has been my mistakes this week, Matt. Thrilling, <laughs> thrilling radio. Oh, uh, thrilling audio uh, journal entries for our, our friends out there. So, Matt, mm-hmm. ask you this week, uh, did you run into any mistakes as well? German, I'm more so thinking on the past mistake. Now that uh, you know we're talking about your your whole ice cream, your smaller ice cream thing. Yes. And uh, I'm thinking about that first time that uh, we went to go get Froyo and how, how big of a mistake I made when, uh, getting Froyo the first time. Matt, mm-hmm. could you uh, remind, remind us, myself included, and our friends out there, uh, what mistake was this in per- that you're referring to? Jaren, it is that I kind of like didn't really understand, <laughs> you know. Okay, Jaren, the first time I went to go get Froyo was with like you and a group of our friends and you know when i had asked you oh how much is like uh froyo usually and you you gave me a price and i i kind of like didn't consider the fact that you probably weren't like loading your froyo like cup yep you probably you know got a normal amount and i was like oh man yo like for example like five dollars yo get out of here i'm gonna i'm gonna yo smash that froyo and Jaren, I remember when I got to the cashier, I think my Froyo was like three times whatever the price you told me was, and I was shocked. That's how they get you, Matt. That's oh, how they get man. you. 
I got God. Uh, it's usually got those God. big beefy pieces too. Those big uh, chocolate pieces, Matt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Probably chocolate. Uh, probably nuts. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably even fruit too. It all it all adds up. Matt, yeah. are there still froyo places around? Jaren, I'll be honest. I haven't been to a froyo place in probably a decade. <laughs> It's kind of wild to think about when the last time we had Froyo was, mm-hmm. where I'm all about t- 2024, Jaren. Still about that Ninja Creamy, Matt. Still mm-hmm. making my uh, protein ice cream for lunch, and that makes me feel good about myself, even though I'm also loading it with toppings. So <laughs> uh-huh. uh, hopefully not neutral at that point. Mm-hmm. Hopefully I'm breaking mm-hmm. even somewhere. Actually, you know what, but... Jaren? I think the only place I ever see Froyo machines now that I think about it is for some reason Chinese buffets. I don't know if you've run into this as well. Uh, I haven't gone to a Chinese buffet in a hot minute, Matt, just because, again, speaking about our baby stomachs, well, my baby stomach, uh-huh. uh, I feel like it's so hard to look at your mortality and realize, oh, two plates, two plates and dessert is mm-hmm. all I can do right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like I'm not breaking even at that point anymore, Matt. Mm. But mm-hmm. uh, not enough about our... <laughs> How we react to ice cream, uh, lost eBay bids, and let's get to the thick of it this mm-hmm. week. Where Matt, mm-hmm. I've been playing a lot of, let's say, mobile adjacent games this week. Yes, just because uh, a lot of has been happening in the gotcha game space, which is a place where I currently reside. Matt. Mm-hmm. I wanted to play, there was a new batch of Xbox Game Pass games this week, but mm-hmm. the allure of the limited collab unit was too strong. And before I get to the new Nikkei collab and the new Arknights collab, mm-hmm. there was one game that has been out for a few months now, and I feel like we haven't really explored on the mistake zone yet which is okay. kind of surprising given my uh background with the company and that mm-hmm. i know it's a few months right now but uh i dipped my toes reinstalled uh my the hoyo play uh you know app mm-hmm. and matt mm-hmm. logged into my hoyo account home to my genshin impact account and got around to finally installing Zenless Zone Zero. Oh, no. The new MiHoYo game Jared. joining, as I said, Genshin Impact and uh, Honkai Star Rail. And that, mm-hmm. let's just say we, MiHoYo has got their re-roll, uh, anti-re-roll practices down to a science <laughs> I feel. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't do a salted account. You know, let's just say with a lot of my other gotcha games, I'm a sicko, Matt. Mm -hmm. And maybe one of my main accounts has a plus five (laughs) whenever I log into the game. But, um, you know, same with Genshin Impact, same with, I'm assuming, Honkai Star Rail. Uh, If you want to re-roll in Zelda Zone Zero, Matt, you need a new email address. Mm -hmm. And... I only have a handful of those that I can readily reach to. So, yeah. uh, Matt, mm-hmm. I have probably played altogether, let's say, six to seven hours of Zone Zone Zero, Triple Z. Mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. let's say for a good 80 to 90 percent of that time that was me replaying the first half an hour um (laughs) across eight different accounts to Uh uh, try my hand at getting a you know decent character Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, i lucked out when i started genshin impact uh my first you know my first role started the game up way back when four years ago uh got i think it was venti or Mm -hmm. whatever a one of the top tier characters and i was good to go Mm -hmm. and to kind the thing with also zenless zone zero uh i know this is thrilling radio matt (laughs) instead of telling you about the game i'm telling you about the reroll process one you can't skip cinematics Uh uh-huh uh so you have to let those play oh god oh that's really actually jaren that like if i wasn't already off zenless zone zero i think that turned me off even more (laughs) where that 
Mm-hmm. Th- this is going to be a real test for all our friends out there if this is a game for them. Okay. Can't skip cinematics. There's a lot of cinematics. Mm-hmm. And you don't get to the actual gotcha rules until roughly... Um, you can probably get it down to 25 minutes, half an hour. Ooh, but I think mm-hmm. if you're you know, following a story uh, and kind of just the light exploring and the light light exploring in the beginning, that might be closer to the 45. Mm -hmm. so you go through all that work and you finally get to roll and met Mm -hmm. we all know uh the gotcha gods uh aren't the greatest just because Mm -hmm. there's only a handful of playable characters right now and if you want a juicy uh s tier character not in terms so s rank character because you know there are different rarities but if you want Mm -hmm. an s tier character uh it's gonna be rough there matt Mm -hmm. plus the reason I wanted to start ZZZ this week was I saw a report earlier where um, Zenless Zone Zero, big revenue records in Japan because they released a new character called Jane Doe. And Matt. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, this, I've seen this character. <laughs> this character is super flash. Matt. Mm-hmm. And all our friends out there, Matt, you already know. Just uh-huh. look up Jane Doe and uh-huh. you'll understand why Japan went crazy for this character. Mm-hmm. And. You know, I demoed her out just because similar to Genshin Impact, when they have a new featured banner character, you can preview them in the demo zone. And that Mm -hmm. really flashy character, her play style is exactly what I'm looking for out of a game like this. So, you know, out of the eight attempts I've done at trying to reroll her banner in the beginning, um, again, similar to Genshin Impact, when you get a S rarity character, Mm -hmm. uh, if you manage to, you know, do the 2% chance you'll get it, you then go into a 50-50 chance if you'll get the um, featured character or another S rarity character. And that, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, somehow I managed, thankfully, two S rarity characters in Jane's uh, banner. Mm-hmm. Neither time was Jane. So yep. um, I run out of email accounts. So I'm, I'm just trying to play with <laughs> that. Uh-huh. Continuing to me being a sicko, I'm going to continue playing two accounts for the next two weeks, <laughs> aka how long Jane's Banner is online, mm-hmm. just because I rolled two really high characters for both accounts. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to I'm going to hope oh, man. Uh, I rolled Jane within the next two weeks on one of these accounts, and that will determine if I continue with Zenless Zone Zero this guy. Uh, or not, where uh, now that my insane ramblings are out of the way... Mm-hmm. Matt, Zone mm-hmm. Zone Zero is, as I said before, Miyahoyo's latest entry in their, you know, free-to-play gotcha super games, if you will. Mm-hmm. And where I believe Honkai Star Rail is a turn-based game, I, I didn't really touch it. And then you have Genshin Impact, which is their more bre- uh, Zelda open-world take. Um, Triple Z is more so a character action game Mm -hmm. with this Matt how would you describe the aesthetic of Zelda Zone uh, Zero it's I want to say it's this urban but still I I don't really know how to describe its aesthetic but it's an aesthetic I really like you know this urban Mm -hmm. street where light cyberpunk but not you know super cyberpunk so where honestly i would get, feel i feel like it's like pre-collapse arc nights almost yes that, that's a good way to say it where again with genshin that's really fantasy mm-hmm. uh hsr that's more sci-fi and then here you have your more uh not far off future but relatively in the future still urban environment and honestly mm-hmm. Matt, that's the type of aesthetic i always want in a game mm-hmm. uh, Matt, i just want to be a trendy uh go-getter in a city landscape mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. um zenless zone zero definitely scratches that itch but when we go into the gameplay it does i think early on it does remind me a lot of Genshin impact where you go in with a team of three characters and you have your basic attack, which is your combo. Uh, you have a special attack, which similar to not the Street Fighter games, you also have a meter where if it's at a certain, I guess, level, you can you, your 
special move becomes an X move and then it has different properties. Mm -hmm. And then once you're able to get more, say another meter, you'll unlock your ultimate attack. And Mm -hmm. when you have three characters in the team, you're able to kind of, you know, combo their abilities and make all these flashy combos when you're fighting enemies where when you fight an enemy, they have a, let's say a guard meter. And when you finally get that up to a hundred in a guard break state, use your special attack. It also puts you in a, what's essentially a tag state where you can tag one of your partners to kind of continue the combo going on. Mm -hmm. And if you time it correctly, you can tag to both of your friends and then tag back into your main, you know, DPS dealer where I think it's, really scratching that visual really spectacle aspect that i like about games and Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. this also has a parry system where oh if you depending on the character's attack you'll have a visual aid as well Mm -hmm. if you you can either do your dodge for a perfect dodge um that puts the game in a kind of split second slowdown and then for you to kind of close the gap and start your combos or you can use that perfect parry to tag in a partner and then Mm -hmm. you know start to attack again so it's really satisfying when you're fighting a big boss and then you just start parrying and tagging in your friend or your teammates and that Mm -hmm. again that's on paper this is such a game for me where i always love I always wanted a game with that utilizes the tag mechanic, but not necessarily in a fighting game, but kind of more in this brawler character action setting. Yeah. Um, pop in that, you know, aesthetic and that this should be a game for me. But mm-hmm. then again, it's the gotcha element and you're kind yeah. of at the whim of which characters you roll. You get, you know, you do get a few free uh say a rarity or you know four star rarity characters but Mm -hmm. it really each character has their own distinct play style some are more good for stuns some are more good for you know support some are your dps and depending on who you roll will really kind of shape how your early time with this game will be where Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. one thing i also want to call out is there there are ranged characters, you know, characters that have usually guns uh, mm. and you can kind of fight in stylized shooting, Gunkana, if you will. And Matt, mm-hmm. for a character action game, I don't know how you feel, but I feel like ranged characters not, don't necessarily work. And for, more often than not, I'm bored with a ranged character in a um, character action game. And that's no different here where... I believe Billy is the free ranged character you get during the tutorial stage. Um, Really, I don't know, Matt, there's just something about you shooting guns in a character action game that lacks really any impact. Uh, And your character kind of just looks dumb because to compensate you at range, they're just doing kind of flips while shooting or doing, you know, that, 360 spinning move where i don't know matt how do you feel about ranged characters and character action games jared i love that shit (laughs) really jared i i love being able to just you know play far away being able to you know i'm i'm assuming that like you know the enemies are going to be charging at you they'll also have maybe their own range attacks being able to just like you know play around dodging like that and then flipping around like an asshole jared that's where that's where i live fair enough Matt. personally i think if this was more like guns and I was just Matt, mm-hmm. if this was more like guns, more like Max Payne and I was doing slow-mo dives and bullet time, I think that would be more fun. But when I'm just oh, kind man. of at a range, just tapping X and then occasionally having to dash in and then do the 360 attack. Uh, I don't know, Matt, not <laughs> as engaging as say, even the sword fighters are pretty cool, but I feel like when you're demoing all the different, uh, five-star rarity characters Mm -hmm. it's just the characters with hand-to-hand combat they look the most flashy i feel like the impact's the best yeah and a character like jane a character like um nico something their whole gimmick is if you do a dodge um 
during a parry, like during a parry window, you know, time slows down, but you leap to your character and then you go into combos where it's just so over the top. It's so flashy. Man. Uh, but it's again that I want to play as Jane. I want to play as this Nico cat girl, but at the same time, not rolling them. And <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, what's the alternative me creating a bunch of different Google accounts and hotmail accounts to keep rolling or, you know, wait to uh, see if there are Google play or iTunes cards on sale. So I can get some sort of discount while I dump money mm-hmm. into something uh, that um. I probably have to dump a lot to get the guaranteed role. And then mm-hmm. again, as someone who played Genshin every day for a year straight you get into the different gacha mechanics where, oh, not only do I need the character, but I need a specific core. And not only do I need a specific core, I need this other material to upgrade their skills. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. it's, as a seasoned gacha player, Matt, it's that feeling of starting from square one and then seeing all the different, you know, treadmills where as much as I want to play as Jane, Matt, it's... Can I stomach this? Can I stomach the gameplay loop? And it's that notion of if I go all in in Jane, how hard is it to not only build her with equipment, but also build her supporting team members? Will I roll mm-hmm. her supporting team members? And it's it's just a lot to, to take in where if you go into the game as a game like you know just someone trying to check it out i'm pretty sure you can kind of get something out of it especially if you like the aesthetic if you don't care who you're rolling but if you're a sicko like me who yeah. has the meta brain rot of playing gotcha games for over a decade now yep yep it's tough matt it's mm-hmm. tough because we need to min max everything but mm-hmm. also i feel like the gotcha animations not Matt, you need that dopamine hit. I feel like their opening, their gotcha opening, not super flashy. It's, no. it's Matt, have you ever pressed start on the <laughs> Persona 4 uh, press start screen on the PlayStation 2 when you have all those monitors uh, in front of you? That's essentially their gotcha screen. And depending on what rarity you get, the screen will tell you what rarity you get. Mm, I see. So, I see. Uh, my last dig at the game, Matt, of course, this has controller support if you're playing on the PC. Um, if you don't hit A to start the game on your controller, but just click to press, uh, you're locked into a mouse and keyboard, so you have to go into your <laughs> options to switch back to controller, and that was annoying. Rip. Classic. Classic. So, uh, Matt, that's... Uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I'm enjoying it, but again, it's those gotcha trappings that God. we're used to, Matt. Where yeah, yeah. I, I feel like in another world, if this was, Matt, if this was like an Octopath Traveler where you, it told the same story, which again, you know, you're these hack, you're a group, a pair of hacker siblings. And then there's a, you know, quarantine zone that you use a robot bunny to guide raiders through um, just, uh, and hijinks happen and there's conspiracies and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um if this was just a standalone title and you had a core six characters to choose from, I think that would be a more enjoyable experience for me personally because um, I can't get past the gotcha elements, Matt. That, that like, yeah, I know that sounds yeah. weird, but I I'm infected. I mean, I'm... to be fair, Jaren, I am wholly avoiding this game because of the gotcha stuff. Even though I think the game itself looks really, really fun, it's. <sighs> Matt, mm-hmm. all I all I would recommend is if you want a taste, download it, do the tutorial, and then, then do all the character demos and uninstall it just so oh, you know man. what could have been. But no, Jared, I can't because because what if I what if you know I do the tutorial and stuff and I get to that first roll? I can't resist that that first roll that they gave you, Jared. And fair what if enough, I roll good? Enough. Then I ha- then I ha- have to play, Jared. It's true, man. <laughs> it's true. But Matt, oh, mm-hmm. these are the shackles that I place onto myself because in addition to Zelda Zone Zero, Matt, I, I still have my, you know, daily rotation of my three core gotcha games. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. First being Bang Dream, Matt, mm-hmm. Yandori, 
prob- I don't know. I'm, I'm waiting for the EOS <laughs> announcement, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going upon two months without a solid event, and I'm not sure if anyone's playing this game anymore. Oh, man. Uh, moving on to Matt, a game mm-hmm. you and I have both played. Uh, me playing still. There is a new Arknights collab going on, and Matt, mm-hmm. we have a new Rainbow Six Siege collab the second one that they do with four new operators a brand new story oh okay. and matt mm-hmm. this is you, you didn't play the first arc knights rainbow six siege collab correct no to be honest jaren i thought this was just a repeat of the uh old rainbow six uh, collab no, no this is a new one you can go into i believe the arc story archives and then read through the first one uh and then the first banner will go online after this current banner ends but Mm. yes we have four new um rainbow six siege uh, operators to come to the game and when the first rainbow six collab happened you know it was that isekai story of four i guess our world uh humans going to the world of terra and then essentially dealing with this civil war while finding out about you know, the infection within the world. So Mm -hmm. in many ways, it was an opportunity for new players to kind of learn about the conflict and the overall, I guess, sickness that this world has. So it was a good tool because you, the Rainbow Six characters act as a, you know, stand-in, a proxy, Mm -hmm. uh, fish out of water, learning about everything for the first time. And this time around, Matt, it's... A, you still deal with a lot of, you know, that kind of Civil War adjacent uh, storyline, but more so a good analogy I saw was when the first batch of Rainbow Six Operators was dropped into the Arknights world. Again, they're in a war-torn region and they have to kind of try to overtop this Milita Mm -hmm. while still learning about the customs. On mm-hmm. the flip side, these new Rainbow Six operators are essentially thrown into a tourist town, you know, a beachside town. Uh, they meet a eccentric art owner who puts them up in suites because they're his bodyguards for the time being. <laughs> okay. And the whole storyline revolves around, you know, there's this uh, community, the poorer district, full of street artists And the rich, you know, eccentric art uh, owner is trying to kind of undermine them for his own means. All in the same time, there's a portion of the central government, uh, a particular figure who is trying to claim power for himself. So Mm -hmm. it's, again, you still have those kind of world dynamics at play but at the same time it isn't as intense as i would say the first one a bit more lighthearted in times and that Mm -hmm. there might be a bit of bl sprinkled in here and there which always a fan of true 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 Uh, true but i remember when i told you about the first time the rainbow six uh collab happened was there was so much text matt and mm-hmm. that's the same case for this Arknights collab where that from the mm-hmm. time I started the Arknights Rainbow Six event, it mm-hmm. took me half an hour to play through my first stage. <laughs> and then after the first stage it took another 15 minutes before I was back to the stage select menu. Amazing. This is another beefy boy visual novel. It takes like, I believe four to five hours in all to read it all. So if you're coming in, just know that you're in for a beef you read. And Matt, Mm -hmm. when you have part two of the Rainbow Six collab, you know that we're all waiting for them to meet the first (laughs) Isekai crew. And while that is hinted at kind of midway to the point when it finally happens towards the end, Matt, it doesn't make sense. Oh, <laughs> how they meet, but they end up meeting and fan service is had in all where there's a lot of callbacks to the Rainbow Six um, property itself. And I kind of 
wish I was more familiar with it because not a lot of references that probably flew over my head. Uh, but for some reason, there are two instances where uh, there are attackers, defenders, and hostages at play. So that's what you get, Matt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And to make matters worse for myself, the last Arknights Limited event uh, pretty much depleted all my uh, premium currency, where luckily I was uh-huh. able to get all three of the gotcha Rainbow Six operators uh, within 60 pulls. Uh, mm-hmm. I believe at 120, you're guaranteed the six star Ella. Uh, but Matt, mm-hmm. I'm next to nothing because I spent the rest of my <laughs> premium currency on their slick costumes. Because hey, Matt, this guy, they're really nice costumes. Mm-hmm. They're really nice costumes. Mm-hmm. And um, I believe for the anniversary event coming, I believe late December, early January, that's where. Uh, the alter version of my favorite character, W, debuts. And that, I oh, am mm-hmm. scared that I won't have enough to pull her. Oh, man. Jaren, sounds like you gotta dip into those Arknight bucks. But Matt, mm-hmm. I, I need those bucks to get Jane in uh, ZZZ as well. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, Arknights Rainbow Six Part 2. Uh, fun collab, fun story overall. Um, less intense than the first one from a story perspective, but... I do like the story that they were telling. You know, it's the tried and true, the street artist versus, you know, the museum, cur- the centric museum curator. But I, I think it's still a fun story uh, that you go through. And Matt, mm-hmm. uh, I think the Rainbow Six operators are just stuck in this world, which is also oh. sad in its own way. Mm-hmm. Where Matt. Mm-hmm. And another thing that's currently, dra- you know, Uh, Killing my phone battery is the new Nike collab, and that. Uh uh, Sorry, Nike. Okay, I was I was really thrown there for a bit, Jaren. Where Matt Nike has recently, you know, collaborated with Evangelion, and Matt. Mm -hmm. Speaking about, you know, depleting my currency wallet. Um, So in the past, we've had three other collabs in Nikkei, you know, excluding Dave Diver. You had Chainsaw Man, you had Near Automata, mm-hmm. and then you had ReZero. Mm-hmm. Uh, each of those times for those events, you had three SSR characters. I mean, two SSR characters, but mm-hmm. for Evangelion, you have three with Asuka, Rei, and Mari. Plus Masoto is, I believe, the free, you know, four-star unit. Uh-huh. And Matt, mm-hmm. too many units. Too many units, not enough premium currency. Managed to get them all. Um, Asuka, I was able to get on my first 10 pull, you know, feeling blessed. But then for both uh, Ray and Mari, that was like 150 pulls each. So not not the greatest, Matt. Not the greatest. Uh, But the story itself is... Matt, they, they just school shoehorned these schoolgirls into their latest schoolgirl uh, characters. And mm-hmm. it's essentially them trying to... Matt... Mm-hmm. It's a classic will they coexist uh together as a unit to fight this big um monstrosity that is threatening to destroy uh their city. And of course the Nikkei school girls get cold feet towards the end, but you know, through the power of friendship they all come together uh and you know, save the day. Mm-hmm. Where it's it's a pretty filler story, if I had to be completely honest. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that it's dragged up, you know, it's dragged over three parts. There's some weird pacing issues. I don't know. I feel like this was probably one of the weaker. I don't know. In terms of the four collapse so far, I think it, it's kind of middle of the road. I still think the near Automata one was the best one, but... In comparison to the Rainbow Six uh, collab in Arknights, Matt, I'm pretty sure if you were to read all of the event stories, um, it would take in Nikki. That's probably like the first two chapters of the Rainbow Six Arknights collab. This is no uh, visual novel, Matt. But mm-hmm. characters look good. It's still Nikki. Uh, it's still a collab. If that's your thing, check it out. But be warned, uh, right around the corner, I believe no early november that's the anniversary unit and uh that's when they usually 
you know, include OP characters in their games. So take that for what you will. But if you're an Evangelion fan, um, you only see the characters, you see them in the plug suits. You don't see anything else, really, not. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, with the Nikkei collabs, it is an isekai where those collab characters are coming to the world. So you don't really get a lot of um, their you know, trademark things you would see in their source material. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least with the near collab, you got the same existential dread uh, throughout. But I don't know. This is less an Evangelion collab, but more so, hey, uh, here are some characters you can pull, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But not... Mm-hmm. I have one more game I want to talk to you about this week. Okay. And speaking about gotcha games... You know me, Matt. Uh huh. Sometimes you have to watch a bunch of ads to kind of get a reward, a daily reward. Mm-hmm. And Matt, the mm-hmm. mobile game ad space messed up. Uh-huh. You'll you'll see a lot of these different games that um, or ads that feature quote unquote gameplay that you know essentially insult you as a viewer that make you want to say, oh, what they're doing is stupid. I can do better, which uh-huh. forces you to download the game and you realize, oh, that gameplay was nothing like it was in the ad. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Matt, mm-hmm. have you ever seen the mobile game ad where you're a person um, kind of walking down a hall or a street and then you're shooting in front of you and then you can get, you can walk <laughs> through different gates to get different power-ups? <laughs> yeah, Jared, I've seen games like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, uh-huh. What if I told you on Steam right now there's a game that is actually that? That honestly doesn't surprise me, Jared. Matt, mm-hmm. can I interest you in Arrow a Row, which is a free game on Steam that is exactly that, where you are a guy with a bow in this medieval setting and you're just walking forward. It was made in Unity, crude graphics. You're going forward, you're picking, you're walking through different gates that give you different powers, whether it be, hey, I want, you know, my arrows more frequently. I want more arrow speed. I want more arrow distance. I want more damage. I want a dog following me. I want a dragon following me. Mm-hmm. And it's mental math at its finest, Matt. And Jared, yet, this sounds like Vampire Survivors in a Line. It is Vampire Survivors in line, and I'm here for it. Oh, man. (laughs) Where, if you know what I'm talking about, it's on Steam. It's free. What more can you want? It's actually (laughs) what it's trying to be. Where, again, Matt, it's that same roguelite formula where you try to make it as far as you can in a run. You get currency for you to get, you know, your items that kind of are evergreen or stick to you, the meta items per se, and Mm -hmm. you go about it again and again, get farther and farther until you get to the end to beat the dragon. Uh, Still haven't beat the big dragon yet, Matt, but uh, I feel like at this point, I bought everything in the store and Mm -hmm. I think the strat right now is to stockpile a bunch of gold uh, for the run you believe will be the run, and then start re-rolling to focus on getting the pet dragon. So, oh, you don't you don't like get? Oh, your goal doesn't reset between runs. No, you essentially. So you only get a handful of gold per run, or you know anywhere oh, okay. between like three to ten. Uh, and then when you get an um to a checkpoint. Uh, or an item drop that lets you select one of three power ups. You you can spend two gold to reroll those. Mm-hmm. And I I think the strat is you stockpile a bunch of gold in between all your runs, and then when you want it to be the run, you start rerolling the drops so you get a dragon every time. Mm-hmm. So I see. Uh, I think that's my sweet uh, arrow arrow strats for you. But <laughs> not if you're looking to kill time and play one of those games, arrow arrow is free. Uh, check it out, I guess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that that mm. was my sicko Jaren mobile game minute, which lasted, I believe, over half an hour. So <laughs> uh, for all our friends who don't care about my mistakes, Matt, please. Mm-hmm. Uh, what other mistakes have you been up to this week? Jaren, I, you know, instead of spending my money on gotcha, I decided to spend my money on board games. 
Matt? Mm -hmm. Smart. Smart. (laughs) At least those are physical, Matt. Uh 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 Matt, at least those don't go away when the service closes down, in theory. Jaren, we'll talk about that later, but... but Okay. Jaren, the the board game that I uh, spent my money on this time was actually a lot cheaper than I was expecting it to be. Because, Jaren, I found out about a, um, for people who don't know it, a Canadian site called Board Game Oracle. Okay. Which is very useful because it basically just collabor or what's the word jaren not collaborates um col colgates i don't know it pulls it pulls a bunch of websites together and then oh. it shows you like all of their prices for a game that you search for all right and right right and i think very importantly for board games it shows you if they actually have it or not because like i've said before on the show jaren since board games you know go through print cycles it's very common for them to be sold out right but Jaren, I I got me a copy of Fire Tower, uh, for you know, uh, I think a, a very good price, about like half of what it was being sold for on Amazon. Matt, you're essentially losing money if you don't buy this. Mm-hmm, I'm losing money if I don't buy it. Uh, but Jaren, I I really wanted this game because I thought it was like a very weird twist of what you would expect a game about forest fires to be. Hmm. Because this is a game where you are lighting a forest on fire to burn down um, other people's uh, watchtowers. Okay. And I, I think I saw this game on TikTok. Oh, I yeah, it's like been a very. I feel like in the past, like I want to say, like three months or so, I've been seeing it like show up a lot, and that's kind of like what prompted me to go buy it. Um, and it made me really like sad that I missed out on its uh, Kickstarter. Okay, so you have it now, Matt. Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of game length, how long does it usually take to uh, get beginning to end? I think for your first playthrough, if like people are new, you know, it's going to take a bit longer than usual. But for sure, I think uh, once people get their groove on, like I think a game is maybe like fifteen twenty minutes long. Well, that's not so it's bad. Like, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty snappy. It's pretty snappy. Okay, Matt. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I gave you some sweet arrow of rose strats. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Please uh, break down the game and then give us your super strats for Yes. Me. Okay. So the game itself, like I said, is about burning down other people and like it's themed that you're in a forest. The board is just, you know, basically a big gridded square and there is a fire in the middle called the eternal fire and all fire is going to be like, you know, coming from that in some way. Uh, what you are doing on your turn is that, you know, you're spreading fire you're playing cards which let you do actions like um oh when you're spreading fire on your turn you have to spread it in the direction of the wind which is set at the very start of the game um when it is your turn you can play cards to put um like fire barriers onto the field so that you know those those part of the board can't be caught on fire you can you know spray water so that you can take out fire that's you know getting cl- getting a bit close to you and you you don't want there you can um spread fire in a more aggressive way uh towards your opponents or you can uh change the direction of the wind so that the fire is going to spread in a either a direction you desire or you know a a random direction depending on like what kind of cards you're you're working with and Jaren this is a very this is one of those games that really brings up resentment in when you're playing with people because okay. this is very much a game where every move you make is hurting somebody uh whether you like it or not unless i guess you're putting out like some uh fire near you but like you know that's just hurting somebody else in a way that you know now they can't kill you on their turn but Jaren, a thing that I really dislike in, um, like, most, like, actually any kind of game, not limited to board game, is player elimination when, like, you they can be eliminated, you know, even, like, halfway through the game or something. Right. So then they're kind of just sitting there not doing something. Yeah, it doesn't feel great, Matt. It doesn't mm-hmm. feel great. Mm-hmm. And I really like the way that Fire Tower handles this. And this also plays into, I think, strategy for Fire Tower. Because when somebody is eliminated, they have a, like, 
small chance to have a comeback win condition. But to be honest, Sharon, that win condition is like very, very minuscule. Um, okay. But when you eliminate a player from the standard part of the game by burning down their fire tower, they come back as a ghost. And what they do is basically just spread fire. Amazing. And, and yep. And Jaren, I think the there is a strategy in deciding on if you want to eliminate somebody or not. Because when you become the person that eliminates somebody, you're going to you're basically like confirming that you are going to be haunted for the rest of the game by uh, their ghost. Which is, you know, pretty good goof and I think it plays especially well at four people when um two people have become ghosts and you've formed a pseudo alliance because you know you eliminated one person the other person that is like you know still in play has eliminated the other person so you've essentially just created a a pseudo team game amazing and i don't know that it just like feels very good and when you know you get into repeat plays you you still have you know resentment from earlier games and Jaren, I have a question for you for like uh, games that you know you can play multiple rounds of, but you don't necessarily have to play multiple rounds of. Okay. Because, like I said, this game is very resent filled, and I think that the uh, creators of this game kind of have that in mind, because when you start a new game, rather than just you know starting from zero, it has like a pseudo precedent kind of effect where for winning the last game you get a bonus in the following round amazing where like you know yeah you you are able to you know just put down fire break tokens which are the things that let you you know stop fire from spreading to certain areas and of course you're going to put that on you and now they up the everybody else at the table that you're playing with now has like you know kind of a target because now you're technically starting at a higher level than they are right and I always like wonder if like that kind of mechanic is good cuz I always feel like iffy on um like you know introducing that into games like when I'm or introducing that like after the first game I played with uh, new people cuz I feel like I'll usually end up with it and I'll, I'll feel bad by like you know rubbing rubbing in one that they lost two that i won and three that like you know it it really is just like i guess veterans picking on newbies at that point and i i don't know i feel kind of bad about that kind of to you know go off of what you're saying man i feel Mm -hmm. like it the i guess the winner's bonus yes per se is something that for me personally, it depends on the group of friends that mm. I'm with where, you know, you gave a perfectly good scenario of if you're the more experienced player playing with people for the first time, I, when, you know, I've really been in that situation, but more often than not, when I am in that situation, mm-hmm. I, you know, a house rule of maybe I have a lesser version of that if you can scale properly Mm -hmm. or in another way um, there's a bonus to you make house rules for the quote unquote losers in that case, or, you know, the non winners to Mm -hmm. kind of give them not necessarily an advantage or a handicap, but more incentive for you to continue playing where Matt, Mm -hmm. it's hard enough to gather, you know, what is it? Let's say four people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to play a game that, you know, you spent a pretty penny on mm-hmm. where, you know, depending on that, that, that group of friends, you, you kind of want to make sure everyone's having a good time yeah, to yeah. keep, to make sure you keep playing where, uh, I'm not opposed to it per se, but at the same time, you, you got to know the people with your with, uh, and chances, sometimes you might be with new players, but they want, you know, those rules in effect because they're competitive. Mm-hmm. Likewise, you might be with a more casual group. Um, maybe scale it back or don't include it at all. But mm-hmm. I think for me, again, Matt, it's 
I, I want to make sure my friends are having a good time so we can keep playing this game that I paid for and I get my money for it. <laughs> uh-huh, so, uh-huh. Uh, I don't know. Matt, what do you think of the winning bonus then? Jaren, I like, like I said, I don't really like it all that much. I, Jaren, I think it just kind of stems from me being bad at precedent when I was learning it. And yes. Jared, I feel like the rules of precedent make it even worse because not only do, is it a, you know, better players get a higher advantage, the worst players start off in a worse position. Right. Yeah. It's totally true, Matt. Totally Jared, true. Oh, man. I think it's just, you know, saltiness from, from high school carrying over to, to my adult life. That, that's mm-hmm. fair. That's fair. Oh, Jared, you know what's even wilder about the uh, bonus, the winner bonus in um, Fire Tower? What's up? Jared, is that if you win twice in a row, your win bonus gets better. That, uh-huh. I feel like that that's for a certain audience. That's uh-huh. for a uh-huh. certain uh, group of friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, I might not be in a situation where <laughs> uh, we can capitalize on that winning bonus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, Matt, n- now I'm getting traumatized <laughs> on past president experiences. Oh, man. Yeah. It feels bad, Matt. It feels bad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm, Matt, mm-hmm. Uh, is there anything else that's pretty good about Fire Tower? Jared, I think, like, maybe pretty good is actually an understatement for this. I think the component quality for Fire Tower is actually very, very good. Because, Jared, I think that the, you know, the board itself folds nicely. It's a thick-ish, like, board. It has a nice finish on it. The cards themselves have a nice finish on it. And Jaren, I think the most important part for me in this game is that the there's a certain aesthetic that the game has with its uh, fire gems, which uh, mm-hmm. represent like the fire that's spreading around the board, which is that, Jaren, this game would work perfectly fine if they had given you kind of like, you know, cardboard punch outs that represent the fire. Like right. it still would have yeah functioned perfectly. But the fact that they decided to go with kind of like these kind of it almost looks like like kind of like um jagged versions of you remember crazy bones? Oh, I love crazy bones, mm. man. Yeah, so like these kind of like yeah, these like big translucent orange crazy bone like you know rock candy looking things to represent the fire. I think that that was such a good add to this game and it makes it just feel and look so much better than it ever could with uh, just like, you know, punched out cardboard fire tokens. And mm-hmm. I am so surprised that the like price point for this game is actually a lot lower than most uh, modern board games. So to have like that big add to it makes it just like, I think so much more better. And Matt, to close mm-hmm. it off, mm-hmm. share one more hot uh, fire tower tip that, you have in terms of strats Ooh, i think you you have to have to use you have something called a water bucket that you can use one time on your turn for right. um like no i guess like cost which as you put out uh three fires in your tower you mm-hmm. need to abuse that thing as quickly as you can because you can get overwhelmed by fire so so easily that uh you might not make it to your turn once your tower lights on fire uh, okay, Matt, mm-hmm. uh, this sounds like a pretty cool game. Maybe scale back on the winning bonuses, but uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, definitely something I do want to eventually check out. You know, mm-hmm. maybe when we're all together again mm-hmm. with the rest of the gang. Yeah. But mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. Uh, before we leave for the week, you know what we won't be playing with the rest of the gang? Uh, what, Jaren? Got to pour one out for Concord. Uh, oh. Matt. <laughs> Uh huh. Some really surprising news was it? Yeah, earlier last week mm-hmm. uh, regarding the latest, I believe, hero shooter from Sony mm-hmm. uh, on the PlayStation on the on Steam. Uh, Matt, mm-hmm. uh, what was the deal with Concord this past week? Jaren, Concord just did bad, like. It had really bad sales. I think what I heard is that it was around 25,000 copies sold across like all platforms. Yeah, I feel like that number is a 
bit hard to corroborate on from what I've seen, just because, you know, the whole, the Steam DB, you know, the concurrent users don't necessarily tell a total picture. And I think the actual sales number Sony never officially released, but there was a lot of, you know, trying to estimate based on the data that is available. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the, I did see the 25,000 figure being thrown around between both uh, PlayStation and the PC side of things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But Jen, I, I guess it just like was not appealing for people. Like it, Jen, just looking at this game from like you know just seeing everything that happened to it is such a wild. I don't like just just thing to see because I I am so surprised to watch or to have seen a game. I guess just like crash and burn in like two weeks. Because, Jaren, from what I've seen of the gameplay, it looks like a perfectly like <laughs> normal game, mm -hmm. which I guess is to its detriment in I guess the current I, competitive hero shooter environment. I don't know. Jaren, I'm just like so surprised that I know that like the aesthetic was like one of the things that a lot of people were kind of bashing the game on, saying that it wasn't for everybody, and I personally am kind of biased against the aesthetic as well because like sci that kind of like sci-fi isn't really my aesthetic but i honestly thought that that would like appeal to or not matter that much to people that it wouldn't do this poorly i honestly expected this game to kind of just exist in its own like ecosystem and not be like you know i wasn't expecting it to be like some crazy gangbusters game but i i wasn't expecting it to be like this poorly received you know, you said it yourself, Matt. It's such a hard, you know, market to step into right mm -hmm, now just mm -hmm. because, you know, when you have heavy hitters such as the poser child of the hero shooter, um, Overwatch, mm -hmm. you know, still having to or still trying to find its footing ever since the, you know, pivoted into Overwatch 2. Yeah. Where... It isn't only the shooter genre that's saturated. Now it's kind of just the entertainment uh, atmosphere mm -hmm. in general. You users these days have so much choice. Where, uh, for better or for worse, a lot of people do have their comfort game, their go-to game, and for you to, you know, try and for let's say temporarily take them out of their comfort game to try your uh, new title. Mm -hmm. You need to have a big hook. You need to do something different. And well, I can't speak to the quality of Concord because uh, Matt, I didn't check it out personally. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that was of note to me was the discourse that surrounded it where you know you had closed betas you had open betas um during the summer mm -hmm. and the reception there you know to go back to the point i was making was this is a pretty good experience that doesn't necessarily do anything new per se mm -hmm. and i think that's such a backhanded compliment in this, you know, market right now because you need to have more than just pretty good to stand out. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, when you're so in terms of Concord and what I was hearing within the, you know, video game news enthusiast cycle or circles, it was you know, characters that have that Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, wit or humor or was attempted to fill that role. Mm -hmm. Humor shooter with no ultimates and, you know, pretty good overall, nothing outstanding where I, I think the media reception to it also didn't do it any favors where no one was... You know, the reviews, the previews, the hands-on impressions weren't glowing. That made me want to try it out. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, we have, you know, the worst kept secret in gamer right now, the new Valve game. Yes. Uh, what was it? Deadlock, I believe. Mm -hmm. Where everything I've been hearing about that, it 
doesn't sound like a game for me. You know, this mobile yeah. adjacent hero shooter. Mm-hmm, but yet, there's still this, from what I do hear about the game, there is this level of excitement. There is this, hey, this is potentially a something that Dota players are looking after. There's like a fever or fever to it or whatever. And I, I didn't get that when people were talking about Concord. And I feel like that might have also contributed to this where no one was overly negative about it. But at the same time, no one was saying you need to play this game, which is also something that, again, goes back to having that selling point, having that feature that makes people, you know, not only want to play it, but just talk about your game in a positive light. Mm -hmm. Where, I don't know, man, it's it's so tough out there right now to especially try to establish yourself as a service game in a time where people have the service game of choice. And... I know one point you wanted to bring up, Matt, was this wasn't a free-to-play title. This launched Mm -hmm. with a $40 price Mm -hmm. uh, point. And I guess I'll I'll ask you what you were going to ask me, Matt. (laughs) Uh Do you think if it did launch with, you know, as a free-to-play with a battle pass, with microtransactions to help support it, do you think it would have had a bit more legs? Or do you think it would still run and eventually run into the same problems? I think it might still run into the same problems, but I do think that it would probably last maybe a year before like it it turned into this. Mm-hmm. And I know that's kind of like maybe a a really like downer take to look at it or like downer lens to look at it through, but I do wonder more so if they are going to use any parts of a Concord and like you know, I guess like maybe rework it and turn it into another game, or like you know, a free to play game, especially because like I feel like you can't just like from what I heard, they like drop like two hundred million into this uh, game, and I feel like even if you are gonna shutter this game, which I think now is already shuttered and. You know, I think I, I never mentioned, but like the the fact that they like shuttered and are giving like refunds to everybody is is like extra wild to me. Like it, it's good on them that they're going to be giving refunds, but I I do wonder if this isn't going to be the last time we see Concord. Yeah, you know that's what's making its way around during the discourse of is it you know is it more financially viable to refund everyone and you know shut it down now in comparison to, hey, let's face potential, you know, legal repercussions or, you know, community setbacks, plus the reinvesting to kind of change this game fundamentally, where mm-hmm. I think that's the question of will this game come back? And again, I, I don't have any insight into that to make a guess, but it's one of those when you're offering full refunds and with the verbiage with how fast the turnaround from launch to, you know, essentially shut down was, you know, Mm -hmm. I think there is a strong possibility it just doesn't come back as well. And so when he's trying to cut its losses now where, you know, Matt, Mm -hmm. we've seen it before. We all love the comeback story, you know, Uh uh the No Man's Sky is the Final Fantasies. But I, I feel like it's getting just as it's getting more difficult to launch a new service game, it's getting even more difficult to, you know, try to make it work where, Mm -hmm. you know, Deadlock's coming, Marvel Rivals is coming, each with its specific selling point, its specific, you know, quote-unquote niche. Uh, I don't know what Concord has. I'm not a game developer, Matt, but Mm -hmm. I don't Mm -hmm. know what they have to do to make it penetrate the market. And even then... It's if the game were to launch free to play, I agree. I think it still runs into the same problems of what's the major selling point of the game. And if it, depending on how much it costs to figure it out, I don't know if we'll see them actually try to invest. Mm-hmm. That. But mm-hmm. I don't know, Matt. It, it, you, you just feel bad about the whole situation, you know? Yeah. This is a team uh, that put in years of work. I know there was 
people have been throwing the number eight years around, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, there are some caveats to that where we can all say that, you know, a group of passionate people worked on this for many years and it's always hard for you to pour so much of yourself into that project and for it to have such a turnaround uh, from launch to end and unfortunately become, let's face it, the butt of a joke on the internet Mm -hmm. in the gaming community. Uh, Not great, Matt. So I don't know. I I hope uh, whatever the team works on next, uh, they're able to stay together because Matt, Mm -hmm. not the healthiest of industries right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but hopefully, I don't know what I'm also curious, Matt, is, are there any lessons to be learned about Concord in terms of Mm -hmm. trying to launch successfully launch a live service game in a saturated market or Mm -hmm. I don't know, Matt, is the service bubble just about popped at this point? Can't, yeah. can't really tell. Like, but... I genuinely I genuinely wonder what's going to be... Because ha- I don't think there's going to be any, like, you know, real immediate changes to how people are going to be launching, Um, I guess, like, live service games. But I'm I'm expecting that in, I don't know, maybe two years, we're going to see the effects of, like, Concord on launch strategies. And I'm really interested in seeing, like, what it's going to look like then. Man, Matt. Mm-hmm. It's tough out there, Matt. It's tough out there. Mm-hmm. Uh... I feel like we shouldn't end on a bummer yes. right now. So uh, what can I pull out real quick? Uh, Matt, mm-hmm. apparently the official McDonald's account on X or on Twitter is teasing a Genshin Impact collaboration. Oh, God. <laughs> so take You're, that for what you will. Do you think that makes it um, like North American side? Or was that, did you say it was only the Japanese one? No, it, it says at McDonald's, so take that for what you ooh, will. Ooh. Jared Matt, is buying is buying burgers from McDonald's, buying gotcha. Does that count? Matt, mm-hmm. those burgers are tiny now. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I feel like the value proposition isn't there anymore, Matt. Jared, I'm on the McDonald's website right now. You can You can order McDonald's glasses. Or like like drinking glasses, not like eye glasses. Oh. It's a grimace one Matt, that I kind of want right now. If you it's met, a Hello Kitty prescript- one. Oh, pretty Matt. Is it a Hello Kitty cross Yu Gi Oh cup? It is not, glass? unfortunately. Oh. I'm okay. seeing but- <laughs> I'm seeing a Hello Kitty. I'm seeing Snoopy, Barbie, Hot Wheels. But yeah, the classics. The classic. <laughs> that that's the fast food collaboration. <laughs> with, uh, not trifecta, square, I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whatever has four corners. Uh, but Matt, mm-hmm. funny that you mentioned collaborations that I mentioned uh, or that you branched off of my mention. Because Matt, mm-hmm. it's that time of the week. The mm-hmm. Don't Match Me Challenge brought to you by me this week. And Matt, mm-hmm. I talked about a lot of collaborations this episode. Uh-huh. So Matt, mm-hmm. For this week's Don't Match Me Challenge, this is my collaboration-inspired uh, segment of the week where this is a Don't Match Challenge where every week either Matt or myself will bring five questions. Uh, and your goal is to think of an answer that doesn't match my answer to the questions. Mm-hmm. And, you know, easy mode is not matching me, hard mode not matching us, uh, but... You know, Matt, I, I feel like I'd never add this caveat, but hey, say we say a question, you don't really are unsure of the answer. Uh, just pause the episode and look it up mm-hmm. and try mm-hmm. to figure it out. Mm-hmm. But Matt, mm-hmm. speaking of collaborations, question number one. Mm-hmm. This is, you know, this is broad. This is this might be just philosophical, but Matt, uh-huh. name something that is the result of a collaboration. You know, when two things oh. or three things or multiple things come together for a collab, name something that comes out of said collaboration. <laughs> this is this is very broad, Jaren. <laughs> that got to start off broad. Oh man. Uh, okay, if I get caught on this, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be butt mad. <laughs> so let's start on five, four, three, two, one. Matt and friends, 
if you said a drink, oh. you're out. Ooh, Jared, how do you feel about a McFlurry? <laughs> Matt, mm-hmm. that's a dessert. Ooh, okay, okay. Matt, mm-hmm. shout out to the Raptors McFlurries. Oh, what's the uh, Raptors McFlurry? Matt, mm-hmm. I feel like there was, it was just a Smarties McFlurry with like red oh, <laughs> icing on it or something. Do, I remember do, 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 that do. was a collab earlier, but moving on. Matt, mm-hmm. let's get a little more specific. Okay. Uh, I have to make my my weekly Fortnite mention. And oh, Matt, okay. Mm-hmm. Fortnite has a gaming legends of rarity, which is essentially the rarity they assign to any video game that, you know, character or adjacent, um, I guess, persona Mm -hmm. to be into Fortnite. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is name any gaming legend that is in Fortnite. Ooh. Matt, there are a bunch. Mm -hmm. Fortnite has collabed with a lot of different games. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is name a gaming legend in Fortnite. Mm -hmm. Five, four, three, two, one. Matt, Mm -hmm. how do you feel about the notion that kids in the future will think Master Chief is a Fortnite character. Oh, man. Jaren, I also thought Master Chief was a Fortnite character. <laughs> oh, man. I got God, Jaren. I got God. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry, Matt. I'm sorry. But, Matt, oh, man. Mm-hmm. Mr. Halo is Mr. Fortnite oh, man. to some future generations, and that is pretty disgusting when you think about it. Can't believe it, Jaren. Can't believe it. But, mm-hmm. Matt, hmm Master Chief is green. You know what? <laughs> you know who has hair that's kind of adjacent to green? <laughs> My girl, Hatsune Miku. My... Oh, man. Name a game that Hatsune Miku has collabed with. Uh, Matt... God. <laughs> Matt, I feel like Hatsune Miku is... In that tier, alongside Evangelion, um, alongside ReZero, uh, just as a property that's an easy collab to do. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. name any game that has collabed with Hatsune Miku, <laughs> or ha- that Hatsune Miku has appeared in, in some oh, capacity. Man. Jared, I think you're going to get God again. Okay. <laughs> okay. In five, four, three, two, one. Matt? Mm-hmm. Did you say Fall Guys? Ooh, Jared, I did not. Jared, okay. I said fitness boxing. <laughs> no, I was so close to buying it this week. <laughs> that game is expensive, oh, and I had, to, I had to resist, man. I had to God. resist. Jared, I honestly think that one of the highlights of my most recent trip to Japan is just walking into a Don Quixote and seeing Hatsune Miku fitness boxing protein powder. That's pretty good, Matt. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. when I think about... Matt, I don't know how to segue to this. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. Matt, uh-huh. name a non-Street Fighter game that our boy Ryu has appeared in. Ooh. Matt, mm-hmm. Ryu... Pro- Matt, is Ryu the poster boy of Capcom now? Right now? Oh, I think think so i can't really think of anybody else like i want to see mega man because i'm a mega man fanboy but mega man's like not doing anything jaren but you know who's doing stuff that hmm. our man ryu, ryu <laughs> i was gonna say rico ryu that name hmm. a non-street fighter game that ryu has appeared in Ooh. uh in five four three two one matt uh-huh if you are a friend, said Asura's Wrath, Ooh. you were out. Jaren, I went with Super Smash Brothers because I wasn't sure if like Marvel vs. Capcom counts. <laughs> well, technically not, but you're good, Matt. You're good. Nice. There's no Street Fighter in the title. Mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. Other games are our boy Ryu has appeared in in some capacity. Matt, Monster Hunter. Uh, he was in Exo Monster Primal. Hunter? 
isn't he like an armor <laughs> in Monster Hunter? Uh, Akuma not... is a is an armor in Monster Hunter for sure. I'm not sure about Ryu, I'm, but Monster I think it's just Akuma. Hunter Ryu. How to unlock Ryu from Street Fighter? <laughs> oh, okay. From okay. IGN. Uh, so Matt, mm-hmm. fi- final question for this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, our boy, another boy of ours, mm-hmm. Matt. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I was going to make this a bit more specific, but, you know, I'll, I'll leave it up to fa- our friend interpretation. Mm-hmm. Uh, another name a game, Matt. Mm-hmm. Name a game that our boy Geralt of Rivia has appeared in. Oh man, that uh-huh. the Witcher uh-huh. uh, himself. Name a game that Geralt has appeared in. Ooh. So that mm-hmm. in five, four, three, two, one. Matt, mm-hmm. if you said Damon X Machina, Ooh. you are out. Oh, I didn't even know he was in that game, Jared. Because I said Monster Hunter World. Uh, good pick, Matt. Good mm-hmm. pick. <laughs> Joining our boy Ryu. Mm-hmm. Matt. Mm-hmm. Uh, other acceptable answers would be we have Bellatro. Oh. We have Matt. Mm-hmm. I had other game. Oh, Soul Calibur 6. Oh, I didn't uh, know who's in that. Matt, you know who's also in Soul Calibur 6? Hmm. 2B. A. Which was a alternate question before I went with the super broad one in the beginning. <laughs> that mm-hmm. screw it while we're here. Uh name a game uh other name a game that 2B has appeared in. Bonus oh, round. Man. Not make mm-hmm. it up. Uh-huh. <laughs> let's let's make up for the Fortnite goof. Oh man. Name a game that 2B has appeared in in some capacity. <laughs> oh god. In five, four, three, two, one. Not mm-hmm. did you say PUBG? Ooh, no, I said uh, the other shooting game, the butt shooting game of uh, Nikkei. Uh, Matt, I mm-hmm. think 2B will ever be in Smash Bros. Oh, man. Jaren, I honestly think that if, you know, Sakurai didn't say that Smash Bros. Ultimate is going to be like the most ambitious Smash Brothers, I I would have exp- I would have expected eventually 2B could be in it, but... After after dropping that, I don't think that a two B is going to be in any other Smash games. Oh man, Matt. Mm-hmm. I know we tried to keep this under an hour. I'm sorry about that. Oh man, uh, <laughs> just a classic mistake zone episode. But that mm-hmm. one last goof. Mm-hmm. By the time our friends are hearing this episode, I'm pretty sure the PlayStation Five Pro will be announced. Ooh. Matt, mm-hmm. what are your thoughts on the PlayStation Five Pro, Jared? I <laughs> I I wonder. How long is it going to take for the PS6 to come out? Matt, mm-hmm. I'm just going to say it now. Uh, I was waiting for the PlayStation 5 Pro. Just going to say this. Too expensive for me. Ooh. Jaren, but how are you going to play, uh, what's it called? Korean Dark Souls. <laughs> Stellar Blade? That's it. That's the one. <laughs> that will come to the PC, hopefully. Oh, eventually, man. Matt. Eventually. Someday. Someday. But. Mm-hmm. until then matt i want to thank you as always for joining me this week editing this podcast and honestly matt mm-hmm. putting up with my <laughs> uh sicko ramblings on oh, gotcha games jared i i want to say thanks and i want to you know thank you for as always hosting the show you know bringing us our don't match me and jared honestly after your stuff we could have just you know edited the episode and we could have just had filler for you know we could have had content for sure for the next episode matt mm-hmm oh man i'm I'm scared about next episode same same, (laughs) but until then uh i want to thank no i don't want to thank costco Mm. i don't want to thank costco sundays i don't want to thank uh small costco glizzies Mm want to thank um matt Mm -hmm. i'll I'll save my thanks for jane doe in zone zone zero (laughs) if uh (laughs) at the end of my two weeks of madness uh Mm. she comes home uh I want to thank Nikkei. I want to thank uh, Asuka. I want to thank uh, Arknights. I want to thank Ella. Not. Mm-hmm. Don't want to thank those mobile game ads that are a sham. Oh, Not. man. Mm-hmm. Want to thank. You know what? Still got to give it up to the Concord team. Sorry about uh, the game, but ho- hopefully everyone bounces back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, Matt, mm-hmm. until then, please take it away. This has been the Mistake Zone, and we're all out of making new ZZZ accounts. Now, do you have an email I can use? <laughs>